Last week, we did our first vlog. I hope that you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed making it, and I'm looking forward to making this week's vlog because this week is gonna be starting out with a bang. It's Monday morning right now. We've got a bunch of fish that have to go out today because we didn't ship any out last week. I thought today would be a great opportunity to share with you our process of how we ship fish. It's not an overly complicated process, but a lot of people want to know, you know, what's involved? How do you do it so that they know their fish are going to be safe when they receive them in the mail? Because a lot of people are still apprehensive about ordering fish online, and I totally understand that. So I wanted to go through my process today of how we pack and ship fish and also show you what Lisa does. She's the one that actually bags the fish and brings them to me. I put them in the boxes and I ship them out. So. We have two different kinds of boxes that we use. One we use for UPS, and the other we use for Priority Express through the Postal Service. And then when the weather breaks and it's warm, we'll be using flat rate boxes or uh, priority, priority mail boxes through the Postal Service. But right now with it being February and it's cold and we just had a huge winter storm, we're using Priority Express only and UPS Next Day Air only. So. For UPS, <clears throat> we use these. Now let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you how lucky I am. Today has been a day that Lisa and I have been, you know, like, this is gonna be a big one. And I was stressing out upstairs, getting all of the orders ready, getting everything printed out, getting the shipping labels printed out. And I come down here and I find that Lisa has already made all of the shipping boxes for me for UPS, which is a really big deal. Uh, so thank you to Lisa for that. She's in the other room right now, she can't hear me, but these are the boxes that we use for UPS. We buy these boxes, they are uh, insulated boxes that you have to put together. Basically, they send you all of these foam pieces, you assemble the box, and then you assemble all of the insulation inside. It's very, very easy to do, um, and it's a little expensive, but it's worth it to make sure that the fish uh, get where they need to get safely. So what I do every single morning that we're shipping fish, the first thing I do is I make the boxes, I open up the heat packs, and I get them firing. Apparently somebody's doing laundry. So what I don't want to do is pack a fish up, send it out the door not knowing whether the heat pack is heating up or not. I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things that makes me worry. So I like to make sure that heat pack is good and hot before I hand it over to UPS or to the Postal Service. So I'm gonna open up all of the heat packs. I'm gonna wrap them up in paper. I'll show you all that. And I'm gonna put them in these boxes and then I'm gonna let them sit until Lisa is ready for the fish. So I'm gonna do that. I also have to put together 14 Postal Service boxes. This is gonna be fun. Seventy-two hour heat packs. Okay, so it's been a few hours. I got all of the dry goods orders packed. They're ready to go. While I was doing that, Lisa was in the beta beta room packing all of the fish. I've got a bunch of them over here right now in this little tray. This is kind of how we do it. She packs them up, I get the boxes ready, and then while the boxes heat up, I pack the dry goods, 
And then when I'm done packing the dry goods, she brings out the fish and here we go. I wanted to show you her packing the fish, but she's a woman and refused to be on camera today. Uh, and since then has actually left town. She got out of here. She was now, but in reality, she was in a big hurry and she had to go. We'll talk about more of that later. But my process for packing fish starts early in the morning, like I showed you earlier, but then we get to where we are now. And I wanted to show you exactly what I do in each box and then I'll do it a couple times and you can see how this whole process goes. First things first, every fish goes into one of these. It's like a little, it's like a little insulated blanket. Uh, I don't know that we're gonna do this in the summertime, but we do it definitely in the wintertime. It's another added level of insulation for them. Uh, they all get the 72 hour heat packs, like I showed you earlier, and they all get extra paper in the boxes, the insulated boxes, again, just to keep everything warm and, and keep everything good to go. Of course, they get the bubble sticker, just like everybody gets when you order from us. And there we go. Let's get into this. Uh, let me show you how I do it. We'll show you a couple times, and then I don't know what we're gonna do next. All right, so this first one is going to Jeremiah Nolasco. I hope I'm saying your name right, Jeremiah. Sorry if I didn't. It is an alien male. Uh, he's in here, double bagged, plenty of water. A lot of betta breeders and shippers would say that this is very overkill. I'm okay with overkill. Overkill costs me money. It costs me more money than your average retailer uh, because of these little blankets, because of the 72 hour heat packs. We do not charge our customers extra for all that stuff. A lot of these retailers will charge you a couple dollars for the heat packs, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't have a problem with that, but we don't do that. Uh, this is all stuff that we just eat the cost because we would rather have the fish get to our customers safely rather than have to worry about them and all that kind of stuff. So this one is a UPS. So I grab one of the UPS boxes. Oh yes. Can you feel that? It's nice and hot. <laughs> anyway, the way I do this, very simple. And I've got like 26, 28 uh, of these boxes to pack up today. Uh, so it, it gets very repetitive and very fast for me, but the heat pack goes up against the back wall I take a piece of paper, I put it over the top, and then I lay the fish basically across from the heat pack. And then I use the paper to cover the fish up a little bit more and provide some padding between the heat pack and the bag. And then I take another one, not two, but one. And again, I'm using this to make sure that the heat pack doesn't come in contact with the bag. Uh, this time of year, I don't think that would be a huge issue, but we want to keep the fish warm. We don't want to boil the fish. So that's what the box looks like when it's fully packed in there. Uh, all Jeremiah ordered was the fish, so there's no nothing else going in here. It's ready to close up. We take the acclimation procedures, we take the receipt and the sticker, and that's it. It's as simple as that. Ever since the doctor told me I need to lose weight, I've been on kind of an obsessive uh, 10,000 steps a day thing. Well, since I got the treadmill, treadmill doesn't really document the steps as well. So it's a great opportunity to take the dog for a walk. Ike is out here walking with me in his little dinosaur outfit because the vet said he needs to lose like a half a pound too. And you know what? While I'm here, let me show you something. This is a building right down the street from us. I walked here with Ike and uh, it doesn't look like a whole lot right now cause you know, it's kind of missing a roof. But this is a 4,500 square foot building 
a uh, little bit of a leak in the roof too. <laughs> Obviously this building uh, is, you know, currently being renovated. But uh, if you had seen it a month ago, there was, it was just full of trash. The roof had collapsed in, it was pretty disastrous. We drive by it every day going to the post office. But the reason why I'm here today is this building is going to be an option for us when we choose to move our business out of the house. I've actually already talked to the owner of this building and uh, he's like, yeah, we could definitely rent it to you uh, and it'll be good because I can spend less money renovating it because all I would need basically is like a shell. But I don't know, he wants a lot of money for it. And the question becomes, do we rent something like this, which will, it'll look nice when it's done, uh, for several thousand dollars, probably four thousand, forty-five hundred dollars a month is what this building would cost. It's forty-five hundred square feet, so I mean, it's it's a big building. But do we do that, or do we build a building on our property? That adds a whole other set of complications, which we'll talk about later. But I don't know. This building is really cool. It's right down the street from our house, and uh, it could be something that would house our business quite nicely. <sighs> That price scares me though. Ike, you ready to go? Ike, Ike. Hey, dude, dude. Hey, are you ready to go back home? Let's go. He got tired. There we go. Now we can go, Ike. We're not big time enough yet for the post office to come pick up the orders from us. We still have to bring them here every single day. Part of the job. Have you ever watched any of my videos? You probably have. I'm I, 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 I keep meaning to get on and look at some. You've never watched any of my videos? I, I, I have searched for you on YouTube though. But not very, not hard enough. I might not be fortunate enough to be big time enough to have the Postal Service come here to pick up my stuff, but I'm lucky to have this guy. He comes here every single day. And let me tell you something, he even came here after hours one day to help me get that fish tank out. That was a big deal. That's a heavy tank. Thank you. You're welcome, I brought you a package. Oh man, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you used the hand truck for that. That's good, is that even for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It well, is for me. Somebody sent me some stickers. All right, well I got some stuff for you too. Yes indeed, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Those are people's pets you're carrying there. Be careful now. Don't make me call the office and complain. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is this coke for me? Oh no, that's that's mine. You leave that alone. I like you, but not that much. We good? Yeah. That's it. All right, cool, John. Have a good evening. We'll hey. see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. We'll see you then, okay? As a YouTuber, there is no better feeling than having several videos filmed and ready to go because when you're down to the wire, when you're recording on Saturday to upload on Sunday, that's incredibly stressful. Any other YouTuber watching this, I would definitely recommend that you batch record your videos. And that's exactly what Lisa and I did today. We had, we recorded five videos today. I might look super bright right now. And that's because I'm standing in the set that I put together to record these videos. We pulled out the green screen and we're doing that again for these five videos. And I'm super excited about that. And I thought, you might want to see what it looks like when we are recording. So I'm out here in the garage and I set up the green screen, which you see it is a big green screen. This green screen is, I think, 10 feet wide and pretty tall. I don't know how tall it is, but it makes it easier to set up the camera with the big giant green screen like that. And then we've got four lights that are lighting up got one there, one there, one there, and one 
there. Uh, the two lights here, this one that's down low, sorry if you're getting motion sickness, and this one that's down low, those are shining on the green screen, and then the other two are for our face. Uh, and then the camera is here. This is our Canon EOS R6, in case you're wondering. Uh, and then we have the microphone on a pole up here uh, for sound. So I set all of this up, and this is another reason why it's good that we batch record. I set all of it up, we record four or five videos, and then I take it all down and put it away until we're gonna do that again. So I only have to do that every month or so, and it works out pretty well. We used to have this set up in the basement, and it was always up, uh, not the lights, but the green screen, but we're now using that space for the business. So anyway, I just thought that might be something that you might like seeing uh, what it looks like when we're recording those green screen type videos that we do on Sundays. And now the fun part, I get to take it all down. Yay. For some reason, Lisa seems to just disappear when it comes time to clean everything up. Yes.